Hey everybody and welcome. This is Dr. Heather coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather from Big Sand, Minnesota at my Aunt Millie's cabin on our weekly health flicks talk. Sorry guys, these are pencils. I'm actually trying, I didn't bring a uh, stand for my phone so I'm trying to create a stand with these super cool pencils and the pencil holder. So as your friends are jumping on, know that every Thursday night I come live based on what you guys want to know about and what you guys, oh there are my volume. I may end up having to hold this. So what you guys have asked about is chronic pain, chronic fatigue. There are so many people out there suffering. So when I come live on Thursday night for Health Flick Talks, it's to help you better understand what the current credible information is out there and honestly to help give you some hope and inspiration knowing that there are things out there that maybe you haven't heard of, maybe things you just hadn't thought about because maybe you're so focused on what's happening inside your body or around your environment that you haven't really just taken a moment to open up and go, well, that could be super helpful or that was easy. I should have tried that so that's really what we're going to base tonight's talk on and then i've got like six pages of notes i promise not to be that long and know that if i miss your question it's simply because i'm trying to stay focused and i will come back and answer that personally so tonight is about chronic pain it's about invisible pain so it's something as easy as this if i'm holding this bottle here what do you think is in here well, I would say most of us would assume that there was water in there. Somebody else might think there's vodka. Somebody else might think there maybe there's some ketones, there's some gin. I mean, you can think a lot of things are in a bottle, especially since it's blue. Maybe it's some Kool-Aid that's uncolored. Maybe it's just sparkling water. So we're judging a book by its cover. That happens all the time with people who are suffering from chronic pain. Three million people suffer from chronic pain. Eight out of every 10 adults suffer from chronic pain. What is chronic pain and what defines it as chronic pain? Chronic pain is something when you've had pain for more than six plus weeks that your body has been experiencing that. And I would love to take time to go over A to Z, every single chronic um, disease that's out there, but we can't do that tonight. Um, just to let you know, we did focus on fibromyalgia a few weeks ago. We'll continue to do that, but I do have an amazing opportunity tonight to bring Tammy to the, to uh, let me add, New good friend Tammy is actually a deaf interpreter. She's going to help us reach a larger community tonight. So Tammy, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, good, because I uh, my camera stand is not working and with the thing I rigged up is not working. So I'm probably gonna be holding this a little bit crazy and I would have picked an outside scene if I didn't try to make the inside work. So we're gonna get down to business, Tammy, and we're just gonna hit it hard. So. As we get started, I want you to think about your family and friends, the people that are around you. Who do you know, or maybe this is a yes for you, who's suffering from pain? Suffering from pain so much that it actually takes their happiness away. That controls who they are, what they do, where they go, and limits their day. I know Tammy and I could both say yes to that. And we have a story, her stories also on YouTube. We can go back to that. But if you said yes to that, where your chronic pain is stopping you from doing what you want to do and limiting the person that you want to be, know that there is hope. There's always hope. There's always a way around that. I like to take of things of chronic pain like a detour in the highway. Yes, it's really easy to go down the highway from Minnesota to Kansas. If there's no stops, you never need gas. The road traffic is perfect. There's no animals crossing the road. There's perfect weather but nothing's perfect. We're not perfect. We're all unique individuals and we all have an amazing story. So as we start to talk about pain and inflammation, they are separate, but yet they're together. Be thinking about who would say yes to that. Who is suffering daily from pain that it limits what they want to do and limits their personality and who they are and maybe people they want to be around. But know that you are not your disease. I have RSD, I have chronic regional pain syndrome. It is not me, it is a part of me, but it is not me. So I wanna thank everybody who's joining here tonight who's taking a moment for their health. And I see all my friends jumping on and you're taking a moment to say, what could I do that could help me? Or maybe there's something here I can help someone else. And a big shout out and thanks and big kisses to Tammy for joining me here on this mission tonight at the very last minute. And we're gonna pray that we have Wi-Fi. I had Ian get off his Wi-Fi and shut my computer down. So let's just talk about pain for a minute. Pain is actually a very normal thing that happens in our body. It's our body's way of saying, hey, don't do that. Pain is meant to protect our body. So if you sprain your ankle, your body says, ouch, if you put weight on it, don't walk, let's let it rest and repair. Or if you burn your finger on a stove, your brain says, take it off the stove, stop that pain, and then your body will actually recover from that. So pain is a very normal thing, and it's actually a good thing because it really does help protect our bodies and helps 
us from getting further damage. Oftentimes we make the mistake when people have chronic pain is taking things to cover up the pain. Not if you need, not if you need pain to get through your day, not if that's mine or Tammy's, but if you have so much pain that you can't get out of bed, then absolutely you need to do something. But if you're taking, say like a nostril anti-inflammatory or Motrin, I'll just say it's probably too hard to sign for Tammy, and you're taking that so you can get to an aerobics class, you may actually be doing further damage to your body than letting your body actually heal and have that pain. So what we do know is, like we said before, there's over 3 million people suffering from chronic invisible pain from A to Z. I want to thank everybody who participated on Monday and gave me a whole list of invisible pain. So let's just think of a few of those for a minute. And Tammy, I'm sorry for the initials. and We may miss some of these, but we can start, okay. Tammy said, anxiety starting from A, right, or Alzheimer's disease. What if it's infertility? What if it's a disease like Lyme's disease or maybe Epstein-Barr or mono or maybe it's uh, MS or maybe it's migraines. Maybe it's PCOS, a hormonal imbalance. Maybe it's an autoimmune disease. There's so many different things that can be happening from the head to the toe. And oftentimes we just think it's inflammation as a boo-boo or a scratch or a bruise. When that's actually acute pain, that's our body's normal response. It's supposed to turn red and brown and other colors and supposed to swell. That's our body getting new flu fluid and lots of good things there to help that injury heal, but then it actually should go away in a normal amount of time. Chronic pain is something that persists for weeks, months, and years and does not go away. It's an imbalance in our central nervous system and capable of actually overcoming that pain. So I'm not going to do any finger pointing at any drug companies. I am not going to do any diagnosing or treating. I am not going to do any finger pointing at maybe what other people are, are planning to do, our lawmakers, our pharmaceutical companies. I just want you to bring awareness about sometimes maybe prejudging someone before you know it's inside, just like this glass of water, you know? And I think uh, I actually posted a, a post on my Instagram uh, yesterday on crutches. And I had someone say, I've watched hundreds of hours of your video and had no idea that I am in a wheelchair. <laughs> That's my scooter. Miss Tammy's in a wheelchair. You wouldn't know it because she's busy doing her job, but um, there are things that happen, but that not who we are so we love that maybe you're surprised that we're in a chair and you didn't know it because we're getting our mission across and it is really to hope and bring inspiration to people who maybe are totally out of inspiration so i want to talk about a few natural therapies pretty quickly and know that i'm going to go more extensively into rsd and chronic regional pain syndrome because i've had a lot of people asking what it is and a lot of people saying that's me and people do not understand Please help people understand what this disease is. I know we understand cancer. People understand MS. People understand what infertility is. People understand what migraines are. And understanding and experience are not the same. So know that I'm not asking that you experience them, but you actually may be doing that. And other things like, as well, diabetes and lupus. And again, there's a whole host of autoimmune diseases. But when we talk about natural therapies, again, I have them outlined um, on my blog, askdrheather.net, but there are so many natural things you can do. We know that our bodies are a triad of health, which means the chemical component is just as important as a structural component and also the emotional component. So, Tammy, is that your, is that your feedback or my feedback? I'm not hearing anything. I just hear you perfectly clear. Oh. I don't... Okay, I'm getting a ton of feedback. I don't know what that is. Okay, <laughs> we've nothing um, turned off here. We'll clear. We will carry on. Are other people hearing any feedback or? Monica, can you hear us, Kathy? They're giving thumbs up. So we will carry on with our business. So again, oftentimes right. people think I've done everything. I've tried everything. And my goal tonight is to make you go, hmm, I haven't tried that. So again, our body is supposed to be in an equal triangle, whether it's mental, emotional, could be just as impactful as something chemical like having Lyme disease or HIV or AIDS or having something structural like you're an amputee or missing an arm or blindness. All those things can be invisible diseases. But number one, we talk about, and we're going to focus on nutrition at the very end, but there are many alternative things. And the great thing about using something alternative is that they're safer, very, very rare side effects with them. And there's really no, no mortality statistics where when you're taking or prescription medication, there is a high level of statistics. Like maybe you have so much pain, you're not sleeping at night. And sleep aid is actually one of the main, one of the main side effects of sleep aid is actually suicidal tendencies, which is not what's meant to be. So we, I'm not going to get go into those, but we're going to talk about natural things from chiropractic, which balances your nervous system 
acupuncture, which has been used for over 5,000 years. And we get off, and if something kind of rings the bell, like, you know, someone's been telling me to try that, then we get done. Please go Google that and headaches, migraine, MS, whatever it is you're suffering from, and see how much information you can find, and then we'll help you get someone local in your area, or we'll try. So um, chiropractic balances your nervous system. Your brain is the most important organ in your body. So I always like people to do good mental therapy or do cognitive therapy, behavioral therapy, uh, um, neurofeedback, biofeedback, all those things actually help calm your brain down to help you handle pain better. Uh, nutritional IV, which is just getting trace minerals, high doses of vitamin C. And again, we'll go more into nutritional support. Oxygen therapy, like hyperbaric oxygen chamber, we know that we can only go a couple minutes without oxygen. So even doing some oxygen therapy in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber or just keep it super simple, which I've been working on all week here with my dear yogi friend, Laura, is really doing some mindful breathing. I had no idea what moon and sunset, sunrise breathing are. So we'll show you those later, but she really in the morning, what you're to do midday, if you're having anxiety or pain or need to refocus, whether it's a kiddo in school or someone who just, again, is having a flare up or herxing if you have limes. And then what breathing we do at night. I know I talk a lot about belly breathing, which is so important for calming down your nervous system, which everyone can do. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people, which I love using essential oils. I did my residency in Salt Lake, so I got exposed to essential oils um, over 20 years ago, specifically Young Living. I'm not going to name a brand, but there are amazing, really, results with essential oils. They're normal things found in our area. Again, I always say, if you didn't, wouldn't eat it, don't put it on your body. And not all of them are meant to be taken internally, but certainly things like lemon and peppermint and lavender, all those things are really normal for your body. The same with acupuncture point. We have 365 different acupuncture points on our body. We have a micro system in our ear. We also have a hand system. And then the Korean Cori Soja now, Chen, just saying Korean acupuncture has another handset, which you can also do. So whether you're, I know, too hard to sign that. <laughs> um, oh, slow down. <laughs> sorry. I'll slow down just for Tammy, okay. not for. No. Okay. So, so again, there's, and hopefully these, you guys go back and take notes. Like I haven't tried acupuncture. I haven't done any breathing to help calm my pain down. I haven't done any essential oils. I haven't done any visualization or manifesting. And that can be so simply done. Like if you love to go to the ocean, go through all your magazines and start ripping out pictures of the ocean or words that are true to yourself or things that make you happy. Also listening to sounds. There's so many different apps you can load down, whether it's ocean sounds or dripping water snow doesn't make a sound but thunder i mean there's some of those sounds that really warm your body calm your blood pressure down help bring the pain down but those are simple free things that you can do that maybe you've been so focused on your pain you forget to do so i have taken about 10 days off and came up north about 12 hours from kansas city to really do some more visual visualization getting closer to nature. This is my family cabin that's been here since 1940. So doing some amazing memories with my dad and my sister, my grandparents who have all left this earth and with my current friends who've come up here with me. And then Laura's been teaching some amazing breath work, which I'm super excited to share with you guys, probably Monday or something while we'll get some taping done. But again, things that you know, like if you love the color purple, wear purple, put a piece of purple paper next to your bed. So when you're having pain, you stare at that color, or maybe it's pictures or collages, very simple, easy things that do so much for your body. Think about this for a moment, because I know people think, well, visualization can't work. Well, it can. If you're afraid of a spider and you saw a spider, your blood pressure would go up, your mouth would get dry, your eyes would dilate. That's a bio physiological change that's happening inside your body. Well, conversely, if it's something that you love, it will do the same thing. And especially if you add that breath work to it or add the essential oils, it can do amazing things. And then see a licensed healthcare provider for things like acupuncture or biofeedback or neurofeedback. Again, I've got more links on my blog about what those absolutely are. And then we're gonna focus on eliminating toxins. So I did a little 10 day series on just getting rid of the dryer sheets and using something natural. Skin cancer is super high, but if we're thinking, okay, I have an incurable disease like RSD, I, there's, there's no cure out there. I know what I can do is to balance out my nervous system because that's where pain comes from. It comes from your nervous system. Taking away toxic things, not only visual things that are toxic like movies and books and, and things like that. Maybe there's a music you're listening to that's not very happy. You can get rid of that and listen to sounds that you love. Paint your bedroom a new color that's very soothing to your heart. And then getting rid of like toxic candles we talked about or you know putting 
artificial colorings on your face or dryer sheets. We all sleep on sheets, hopefully, or blankets. We all wear clothes every day. If you're having dryer sheets that have over 20 toxic chemicals in it and you're putting on your body all day, your nervous system has to focus on that all day long. But there's also really easy things to do. Stop smoking. You guys think it's silly, but the cigarette cells are still very, very high today. So stop smoking. Get moving. If you're an amputee or in a chair, you can move your arms, you can move your legs. I saw Tammy trying some Pilates today. Um, you know, water aerobics, any type of moving. So there's no excuse not to get moving, whether it simply be yoga or Tai Chi, or maybe you can do more walking, running, marathon. Again, just mixing all that up. And then we're going to finish pretty hard with nutrition at the last time, of, last time and talk about fasting. So we kind of defined acute inflammation, which was just you fall down, you get a boo-boo, it turns red, it gets some fluid, it turns colors, and then the body's doing its healing mechanism. And the time that, that your body normally heals is pretty set just based on our normal biochemistry. But what happens with chronic pain is that there's a system that continues to respond to that Spain stimulus. So like for me, I have what's called RSD or reflex sympathetic dystrophy, also called chronic regional pain syndrome, um, generally onset by an accident, a crushing accident. I crushed my ankle in a skiing accident in March of 2014. And then for some unknown reason, my CNS, my central nervous system, my peripheral nervous system for months and weeks and years brain keeps thinking that my leg and foot is still broken. So even today, four and a half years later, it's red, it's swollen, it swells up if it weights on it, it hurts like it's broken. So with RSD, it's honestly onset by a crushing injury. But if you have more of a pathological disease, something that is more like cancer is a pathological disease, or C. diff, or maybe candida, or Lyme disease, or HIV, those are all chemical pathogen diseases. When we start to talk about fasting and intermittent fasting, if your body is busy all day long digesting food and then your immune system doesn't ever have a chance to rest because it's getting all these toxins and trying to get the nutrition out of food, if you're not putting that fasting in there, then your body can't really focus on your white blood cells, your immune system, you know, what it needs to do to fight these pathogens. If you have more of a physical stress like I have, but still red and swollen and bruised, then you've actually got to make sure I do fasting for physical reasons to help bring down the inflammation because if I'm constantly eating, eight to 10 hours every day, and then I'm sleeping and moving around, my body's not getting that rest. My nervous system isn't getting that rest that it needs. Or maybe it's something um, emotional. So maybe it's post-traumatic stress syndrome from a car accident where you also have a physical injury. Or maybe it's anxiety or depression that is, again, maybe onset accident or just something that's happened in your life. Those are invisible diseases. Again, you never know what someone's going through, but those emotional diseases like PTSD, anxiety, Alzheimer's can be just as destructive to your nervous system as a physical or a chemical wound. So as if you're a person here who is suffering from something, whether it's chemical, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, probably invisible to your family and friends, because I've talked about this extensively, like putting that face on, not to hide it. So I'm not here to deceive you. Tammy's not here to deceive you, but it's not who we are. So we don't just walk in with the banner across our head. I don't wear orange all the time, but I do want to be honest and truthful that no matter what's happening, no matter my diet was almost perfect for decades. I was in good physical shape. My grandparents lived to the age of 100. Good genetics on that side. I also have a side of my family where my aunt died at 42 of a heart disease. My sister at 48 was watching TV and passed away. My mom's had cancer and had quadruple bypass and had stents. She's had thyroid disease, which is another invisible disease. Uh, my grandma passed away of cancer. So I have this other component where there is a genetic possibility. But for me to keep down things like smoking and reducing alcohol and eating as healthy as I can give me that winning chance to help fight and go on. So I want to let you know, because someone said, well, you've been hiding behind the camera. I'm not. I just don't do a full body focus on my feet. And I know that I've surprised some people that said, I never knew that you were in a chair. Maybe I didn't know Tammy was in a chair. And that's okay. It's because we're here to help serve you guys. So as we start to move forward into some easy things that you can do to help reduce chronic pain, First of all, you have to acknowledge that you have a pain syndrome. Again, whether it's chronic migraines or infertility or a dystrophy like Tammy has or an MS or RSD, um, know that it's okay. 
just don't let it be the boss of you, no matter what it is. If there's days you have to rest for 24 days, it's not being the boss of you. You're controlling it by resting. If you know you shouldn't go run a 5K because it's too hard on your body, know that you're beating that disease because you're allowing your body to rest and recuperate. So we're going to focus pretty, pretty hard in defining a little bit more what RSD is because it is one of a, it's a rare neurological disease onset generally by a crushing injury. It used to be called Sudax disease. Then it was called RSD. Then it was called CRPS. So it's changed names, but it is hard to diagnose. But once diagnosed and you've had it for over six months, there is no cure. There are some management helping and there's some prescription helping. And that's what they call by manage it. And I can tell you personally, I have the top neurosurgeon, top neurologist. They have written letter to Mayo and Mayo won't even take me because I've already passed stage one. I'm actually at stage three. I don't qualify for any of the studies that are currently out there. I just looked into a neurotidate study. So I am looking at both alternative and Western medications, but I know what I can control is hopefully my mindset. Hopefully what I can control is my diet um, and hopefully bring a little bit more awareness because I did reach out to some fellow people in the RSD community and said, what's misunderstood? What is misunderstood is that RSD, and this is not meant to minimize anybody's pain, invisible pain or health status, that RSD is the highest pain syndrome known to man. It's higher than amputation. It's higher than cancer. It's higher than childbirth, which I have done four times. And so living with this over four years, I definitely understand why the McGill University in 1971 dated it as the highest pain syndrome. What makes it unusual is that there's pain all the time. The fan blowing on my leg hurts my leg. Taking a shower, water on my legs, uh, the exhaust, trying to get into a car and the exhaust fumes coming off the, can hurt. Clothes hurt. So you often see that I'm uh, not wearing not wearing socks or shoes because it makes it too hard to do that. So with RSD, there are some very hallmark signs, which means which differentiate it from other diseases is that there is always color change. So if you see my legs or other people, they could be red and swollen. They could be purple and black, which means we're not getting any oxygen into the tissue, which means you need to rest your body. There's skin changes. There's bone changes. It does spread. So how it spreads is can be simply like if it's in my right ankle and I go have an IV for the doctor to check maybe some blood stuff it could actually spread by that it could spread by a cat bite or mine spread actually by a christmas tree scratching it um, mine also spread by doing mirror therapy they thought that it was only on my right side so i did some expensive mirror therapy like they do in amputees and it actually crossed over into the left side of my legs and body so i do have a full body but i am going to post some pictures of four years ago when i was diagnosed i was because um, it is a dystrophy so reflex sympathetic dystrophy and i'll put some of Tammy's story in here and speak for her, but a dystrophy means your muscles are getting weaker, whether it's your heart or it's your intestines like gastroparesis or it's your chewing muscles or swallowing muscles. There are times when I couldn't blink. There's times when I couldn't chew. Definitely times when I couldn't raise my hand or hold a pencil or hold a fork. But I don't know what that noise is. Definitely. I don't know. Can you hear it now too? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, Tammy, can you hear the noise? You just, you just, okay, I'll just keep talking. So there, um, it's extreme pain that, again, is off the charts when it comes to the McGill, McGill study. There is loss of range of motion. So people say, well, just work through it. Work through the pain. Do more weightlifting. Like, you know, but the theory is if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Well, with RSD, the more you use it, you can actually tear down lean muscle. So that's why when I was diagnosed, I immediately went on to a ketogenic diet in 2014. I was literally just whipping up butter, coconut oil, and a little bit of nut butter for flavor, and maybe a sprinkle of protein powder. And I would just eat spoonfuls as I could throughout the day. I did that for a very long period of time. Um, I saw a top neurologist that wanted to rule out that I was having MS because I was having vertigo. I was only reading about five words at a time. Um, again, everything else was starting to fall apart. My heart, my intestines, bladder. I'm just going to be out there. All those things are held together by muscles. But you can see today, I'm definitely talking, definitely reading, definitely putting some makeup on, definitely swallowing. Uh, Tammy has an amazing story, which we'll tag and share her story down below. But just a few, few short months ago, Tammy was 100% confined to the chair. She was not moving herself. She was not standing. She was not wiggling her toes. And if if you saw her at Pilates yesterday, she was using the band, she's standing up, she's feeling her knees and toes. So what has happened? We put ourselves in a ketogenic state using pure therapeutic exogenous ketones, not just anybody's ketones, 
ketones help reduce muscle wasting. They turn off myostatin, which is an enzyme that actually breaks down lean muscle mass. So by using the ketones and a ketogenic diet, we've been able to regain some of our muscle strength. And there are studies out there talking about, thank you for those big O's, whoever sent those. And, and Tammy and I aren't the only <laughs> ones, but really what I talk about is we know sugar increases pain. You guys can, you can look at that. Sugar increases inflammation, whether it's cardiovascular, whether it's osteoarthritis pain, those things increase pain. Fatty fried foods, so not just healthy fats, but fatty fried foods also increase omega-6, which increases some interleukins and some other cascade of inflammation. Diet matters. Our body, our body is its own pharmacy. Our body takes the healthy foods that we eat, like coconut oil, and can break it down into a fuel source, like beta-hydroxybutyrate. Or our body can break down spinach and make iron and B6. So the food that we eat, 1,000% matters. And the time that we eat also matters. Because if we actually are eating all healthy foods, but we're overfeeding, we're eating an eight-ounce steak, we're um, you know, eating five cups of vegetables at one setting, that is such a burden on our digestive system. There's more nerves in our digestive system system than in our spinal cord. So think about that for a minute. If you are eating from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and you're snacking all day long, or maybe you're only eating two meals a day, but you're overfeeding like 1,200 calories or having a fat coffee that's 650 calories, that's a lot of stress on your nervous system. So when you can allow your nervous system to eat in a shorter window on a ketogenic diet and then supplement with, keto with ketones and or bone broth, I do a lot about bone broth because I call it God's Gatorade with all the minerals and the collagen, which I definitely need for joint flexibility. We talk about RSD or any chronic um, inflammatory disease, autoimmune disease. I don't know what that noise is, guys. I'm trying to stay focused. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, so we, we talked no. about I know. So I just, I broke my fast tonight. I'm going to show you guys. We had pan-fried grass-fed steak. And I am, again, medically supervised, watching my blood pressure, watching my blood sugar, watching my ketones, checking my urine, checking my pulse. I will, um, I'll probably do a four or five day fast again with bone broth and ketones, but I'm going to go based on how I feel. But as you're starting to actually, I'm not telling you to fast because that's medically supervised, but as you start to narrow down your wheat eating window, which I know every doctor would agree with, reducing your sugar, which I haven't found a doctor that said, hey, eat lots of sugar and be healthy. They all say reduce the sugar. They all say reduce the processed food because it does cause an imbalance in inflammation. These are little, little tiny tips that can make a three or five degree shift. So if you maybe start breathing better, like we're talking about the sun and moon breathing or belly breathing, and that makes a 5% change in your day. You cut out the sugar, and for me, it's the dairy and soy, and that makes a 6% change in my day. And then I eat in a smaller window, or I do a 24-hour 24 24 fast randomly, or I just do a 16-hour fast, which means I'll eat my last meal at 3 today, and I won't eat again until maybe 8 or 9 tomorrow when I'm hungry. That gives my body that entire time to rest and repair my foot, my immune system, the edema in my legs. If I had something like Lyme disease, it's just very common. I got a lot of Lyme question. And think about that. That's going to give my body time to rest. Interstitial cystitis was brought up. So that's too hard to say, Tammy. But the bladder's overworking, over spastic. So if it's have to filter out toxins 12 to 14 hours a day, it's going to overwork it. So the name of the game is be as natural as you can. Give your nervous system. I don't know what that noise is, guys. I hope it's just my end and tell me that it's, you can't hear it. But the, but the name of the game is actually calming down the nervous system and allowing the nervous system to really relax. So it can go out there and it can boost your immune system. It can help reduce inflammation and it can allow your brain to get more oxygen and rest at the same time. So that's really probably about the most info I had tonight, but I want to make sure that you guys see uh, and join on my Google spreadsheet. I do do a lot of private Zooms to help you better understand very specific diseases, so just put your name up above. I also have a free downloadable. I'm sorry I'm screaming because I think it's a noise. Okay, thank you, Kim. Um, I do have a free downloadable. If you go to AskDrHeather.net, it's just a, a really easy keto food list. It is autoimmune friendly, which means I've taken off the nuts and I've taken off the dairy except for grass fed butter. So you can download that to kickstart your day in the right way. And then you can also find a food diary there that you can start logging what you eat. And that's really what I would recommend is start logging what you eat and then identifying when the pain is amplifying, what makes it worse. What happens all the time, because yeah, I've been treating patients for over 20 years, I'll ask them, well, how are your headaches doing? Oh, I forgot I had them. How's your foot pain doing? They're like, I forgot I had those. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn says she can hear us over the noise. I don't know what that is. I had set back in. 
I'm just. Lauren's here. I'm not sure. We've had a lot of Wi Fi issues. I can take my headsets here. But I do want to thank you guys for joining me today. And if you know someone who is suffering from an invisible disease or a chronic disease, again, invisible can be chronic migraines. You don't often see cancer until people are getting treated from it. It's the treatments that actually realize that someone's being sick. But if you yourself are someone who's suffering from a disease that is robbing you from your happiness, that is taking you away or limiting the things that you want to do in the way that you want to do it, start being the boss of your body. And if that means rest, that means you're being the boss of your body. If that means cutting out sugar, that's being the boss of your body. But I do want you to start with three major things. We can only go two or three minutes without oxygen. So I want you to do some belly breathing, some sun and moon breathing, which I'm going to grab Laura here before she leaves to have her do a video for us. I do want you to be drinking half your body weight in water all day long. So when you're sleeping and get up, 12 to 16 ounces of water. That can help your bowels if you're having IBS or you're having other GI issues or inflammatory bowel diseases. Water washes away toxins. So water first in your body and then water throughout the day. You just don't want to dump it all at one time because then it just flushes through your body. You want to constantly feeding your body gentle Day. And then really identifying what foods are healthy. If you have a tendency to not have good digestion, and maybe you are suffering from Crohn's or um, ulcerative colitis or diverticulitis or maybe thyroid disease or maybe adrenal fatigue, all those things can be invisible to people. Then know that the best thing you can do for your body is eat when hungry. Don't snack. Don't emotionally eat. And again, this is maybe when you need to get with a good hypnotist or a good psychotherapist or do some neural feedback to really identify, I need to feed my body. My body's its own pharmacy. It has a capability of healing. I could potentially give stem cells to Tammy. I could potentially give her my kidney, right? Or you could chop off my liver and it could grow back. So your body wants to heal. And the slower we can that, let that happen, or I'm sorry, our body wants to heal. I'm getting distracted by the questions. The more that we allow our body to heal and give it some time for rest, the better chance we have of becoming the boss of our bodies 24-7, no matter what the initials are, no matter what the prognosis or outcome is. And again, don't focus on that prognosis or outcome. Don't go get on the internet and look at diseases and statistics. I want you to read positive things. So surround yourself with positive friends. If that means getting out of some of the groups that you're in, like I'm in a couple groups of chronic pain that it's it's not healthy for me again. So that's okay. I just need to find a group that does meet my needs. So Jesse, glad that you jumped on again. I don't want to call out anybody's names, but I do want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank Tammy for saying yes and hanging with me through all this noise and chaos and last minute. And then guys, I want to know what we're going to talk about next week. Um, I had a lot of questions about diabetes. I had a lot of questions about fibromyalgia again, which we've already done. Um, Tammy, what do you get a lot of questions about? Pardon? What What do you get a lot of questions that last about? Part? Yeah, like there's hormones seem to be a very common um, thing. Women from, from PMS to infertility to PCOS. Um, what do I get a lot of questions about from yeah. my disease? Like people... No, not your oh, disease, um, but people say yeah. suffering from a specific condition. Oh, um... I get a lot of P, um, PCOS, a okay. lot of questions about that. Um, a lot of questions. Um, I have a lot of MS warriors that I'm friends with. Okay. Um, so yeah, just those types of like, what, what do you do about the heat? Because heat can cause a lot of your, or my <laughs> and MS patients. Yeah. It can cause a so lot you know of problems. So let's do hormones. So Jamie, I have done a video series on inflammatory bowel disease. It's on my YouTube channel on ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. I have done a thyroid as well as adrenal because those are sister organs. So I already have a YouTube video on that. So let's really focus on hormones, Tammy. That's a great idea. So that can be from infertility to postmenopause to PCOS because there are a lot of people who are suffering. And infertility, again, is a hidden disease. If you've been a person who's been unable to have children, it can be very heartbreaking. It can be emotional to go through the roller coaster of that. But oftentimes what we think is the treatment is actually the cause. 
So we'll talk about that as well. I'm referring to birth control on that. So um, I will say that um, I won't bring any specific patient's information, but I do want you guys to do, if you have other questions, first go to the YouTube channel because I might have already done a talk on that. And then go to my folders on this page. I have three different folders on before and after from cholesterol to diabetes, to inflammatory markers, to aging, to weight management. So I do want to thank everybody for being on there. So Kathy, we'll definitely talk about hysterectomies. And if you can try to leave your ovaries and what happens when you take out those organs, it's very similar to having your leg or arm cut off or being an amputee, that the brain is still telling your pituitary and hypothalamus are still there. They're the signalers to speak. So for our hormones, whether it's our testes, or um, gonads or ovaries, it's all still the same thing. Your brain's telling it what to do. And when we remove organs, there is a negative feedback. Think about like a traffic jam. The road's closed, where does it go? Somebody's gonna reroute. Somebody's gonna get super impatient. I saw it happen. <laughs> we were driving here, you know, mile of cars packed up and stopped on the highway. What happens? One guy swerves to this way, one guy swerves to that way. That's the same thing that happens with your hormones. So we'll talk more in details about that next Thursday night, 7.30 on Health Clicks. I will do a follow-up, just quick email. So again, put your email up above in the Google Doc so I can send out an email just repeating some of the things we've talked about, giving you some clinical studies. I'll redefine what RSD is and chronic regional pain syndrome. And again, make sure you guys give Tammy a lot, a lot of love. This is not easy for people to listen to me because I talk fast and it's not easy to sign either. And we're using big terms. So thank you again for all that you do, Tammy. And I really hope that together you and I and everybody on here can reach a larger community because invisible pain is real. Chronic pain, eight out of 10 people. It's 3 million people are suffering. So hopefully together we can bring a little bit of help, then we definitely want to do that. And I will post the clinical article tones helping with inflammation down below here. Um, Jennifer, just go type up above and there's the very first link. Well, you can actually just click on it and put your information in there. That way you don't have to share it with everybody else. So again, thank you guys. Have a beautiful evening. I'm going to turn this around so you can pull it on, on our lake. So we are going to say good evening, and I'm going to go have a very peaceful sunset here. Laura and Ian are heading out in the morning. So you guys have a wonderful evening as well. Thank you, Tammy.